Hey guys, it's V from AB Simplified, and in this video we will be covering trig limits. So before we begin, it is important that we go over some important trig identities and key facts that you may have forgotten from your basic trig class that will really, really help with the following problem. So, just to begin with, the sine, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Sine of 2u equals 2 sine u times cosine u. And cosine 2u equals 2 cosine squared minus 1, or cosine squared u minus sine squared u. So other than these, the two most important facts that are must needed in the following problems are, are these two. So they state the limit of u over sine of u as u approaches 0, or sine of u over, over u equals 1. And the limit of 1 minus cosine u over u as u approaches 0 equals 0. Now keep in mind, the u does not have to be x. It have to be exactly x. For example, u can be 3x, and u can be 4x or 5x, but the only way that, let's say, case 1 would work would be if the u in the numerator and the u in the denominator were the exact same expression. For example, the, the limit as u approaches zero, as x approaches zero, of two x over sine two x would equal one. And this is the same case for the bottom one. The limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine two x over two x would equal zero. So now, with this in mind, uh, we can jump right into the problems. So. To begin with, our first problem is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x over x. Now like any other problem, the first step I would do is plug in 0 into the initial expression and see what I get. And in this case, I get the sine of 0 since 3 times 0 is 0 over 0. And from basic trick class, you should know that the sine of 0 is 0. And at the end, we get this indeterminate form 0 over 0, and this tells us we, we have to manipulate this expression in some way. So now, when I look at this, the first thing that I see is that one case, where that one special case where it says the sine of u over u as u approaches 0 equals 1. But there's one problem. We see that the numerator has a 3x, but the denominator only has an x. So I really wish there was a 3 over here. So let me write that in words. What I'm trying to say is that the limit of x approaches 0 of sine x, 3x, over x. And I really want there to be a 3 in the denominator so that I can get a sine 3x over 3x. And we know that that equals 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3, or multiply this entire expression by 1, since 3 over 3 is 1. And by doing this, I get the following. The limit as x approaches 0 of 3 sine 3x over 3x. So now, if you remember your limit rules, if there's a constant, for example, 3, multiplied to the function or expression, you can take that out of the limit. So in this case, that would be 3 limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x over 3x. Remember, this is the exact same thing as that. As that, I mean. So, now we have this, this expression which exactly resembles the case 1, which was sine u over u. So now we know that this limit, this limit itself, equals 1. Just this limit. So we know that this, this entire thing equals 3 times 1, or 3. That's pretty easy. So, if you move on to our next one, the next one it looks a little bit more complicated, but really it's the same same thing. So we have the limit as x approaches zero for cotangent two x over cosecant x. So when I look at this problem, the first thing I see are these functions, these trig functions that are compounded, meaning that they have sine and cosine within them. And the first thing I think is that I need to break them down into cosine and sine. And that is the first thing that you should do as well. Whenever you see these trig functions which have which are which are compounded, for example cotangent, cosecant, and they have sine and cosine within them, it is important that you break them down, break them down into the cosine and sine respectively. So if we do that for this we get one over tan 2x since cotangent is 1 over tan and cosecant since cosecant is 1 over sine we get 1 over sine x and in this case the tan is still a compound trig function so I want to break that down even more so we know tan is sine x we know tan is sine over cosine so we can make this 
sine 2x over cosine 2x all over 1 over sine x. And we know that if we ever divide by a fraction, we just flip it and multiply it by the numerator. So this would become cosine 2x over sine 2x. And the same thing would apply to the denominators. And this is a fraction. We would just flip it and multiply it at the numerator times sine x. This. So this we can rewrite. I'm just rewrite it as cosine 2x sine equals sine x over sine 2x. So at this point, we're stuck. We really have nothing to do. And when you're in, the, in this kind of position where nothing really cancels out, you want to immediately think trig identity. And in this case, we want to look at the sine 2x at the bottom. We know from what I told you that sine 2u equals 2 sine u cosine u. So in this case, we could rewrite this as the cosine of 2x sine x over 2 sine x cosine x. And notice how the sine x in the numerator and the sine x in the denominator can cancel out. And in this case, we get the following expression, cosine 2x over 2 cosine x. And now, when we take the limit of this, and we plug in 0, we get cosine of 0, which is 1, over 2 times cosine of 0, which is 2. So at the end, our answer becomes 1 half. So let's move on to our third problem. The limit as x approaches 0 of x secant x cosecant x. So just like the previous problems, when I see this, I want to think cosine, sine, cosine, sine. I want to break, I see these two trig compound functions, I want to break them down into their sine and cosine components. So doing just that, I get x times 1 over cosine x times 1 over sine x. And if I simplify this further, I get x over cosine x, sine x. So now we're at this point. And we notice that there's an x in the numerator and there's a sine x in the denominator, and we think, oh my god, look, we can get, if we take the limit of just the x over sine x, we can get 1. However, there's also a cosine x in the denominator, and we have, we have to try to, like, get rid of that to, to make, that, make the x and the sine x just be alone. But we can just do that. If we separate this fraction, we can do that. For example, if we, if we separate the x over sine x and the 1 over cosine x, we get 1 over cosine x times x over sine x. What we just did is that we split up the denominator and we split up the cosine x and sine x and we created this, these two new functions, 1 over cosine x times x over sine x. So now if we take the limit of this, We can break these two functions down. We can break these two functions and take their limits separately. So that means this equals the limit of as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine x times the limit as x approaches 0 for x over sine x. Now this is perfect because the cosine x can stand by itself. So we know that 1 over cosine of 0 equals 1. And we know that the limit of as x approaches 0 for x over sine x like the initial key fact that u over sine u equals 1, that this equals 1. So at the end, we get 1 times 1, which equals 1.